knowledge, used 172 times in 169 verses of the Bible. The art of defeating ignorance and gaining knowledge, both divine and natural. God's power is unstoppable, even in the presence of what seems to be relentless evil. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. My name is Rod Hembry. And I'm Janice. And this is Quick Study, a program designed to take you through the Bible in one year. Today we land on the Embracer. That's what his name means. It's Habakkuk. And Habakkuk chapters 1 through 3, we are going to focus on the Embracer. In fact, he says, how long, O Lord? He embraces the circumstance, which is very evil, in order to learn what God is trying to do. So stay with us. We'll talk about that and more coming up in, a, in just a minute. Here is Corey with Bible Archaeology and History. Today, we are going to be taking a look at some of the early history of the split kingdom. More to come on that. All right, very good. And a special welcome to everybody listening on Radio 1380, Rise Radio out of Toronto. Every day from 3 to 4, it's great to have you with us mm -hmm. on the radio program here. Now, what is our Do You Know? Well, it's a little bit of an intense question. I've got to set it up. Habakkuk compares the Chaldeans catching men in their nets like fish. So here's the question. Do you know what Habakkuk says the Chaldeans do with their nets and their drag nets after their big catch? All right, the great question coming to you from Habakkuk. She says Habakkuk, so we'll see what's <laughs> going on later on. Right now, here's Corey with Bible Archaeology and History. Today, as we study the book of Habakkuk, this minor prophet in the Old Testament, um, I want to talk about really what Habakkuk is prophesying about. He is predicting the destruction of the southern kingdom of Judah by Babylon. Now, there is a lot of history here why Judah is going to be invaded. They have broken their covenant with God. So right now, you and I are going to track backwards into time this broken covenant with God, right back to the very beginning. Um, the, the nations of Judah and Israel were originally one nation, and they were supposed to stay one nation, but they were split because of the foolish decision of Solomon's son, Rehoboam. Right now, you and I are going to look at the history of that decision. After the reign of Solomon, the Bible presents the people of Israel as tired, tired of building, tired of advancing. The constructural prowess of Solomon's reign had taken a toll. Unfortunately, Solomon's son Rehoboam was foolish in how he handled the people. He wanted to come across as tough, brave, with even more authority than his father. Rehoboam successfully lost his kingdom and split the nation. The argument had stemmed from labor, not voluntary labor, but forced. Not quite slavery, but a duty to one's country as outlined by the king. So a new term, a new job had arisen, and it presents itself in the Bible. It's called the overseer of forced labor. A few of these overseers are mentioned by name. Adoniram was in charge under King Rehoboam. And Jeroboam himself, the man made king over the northern ten tribes of Israel, was himself once an overseer of forced labor. 
Today, a seal of a man like these men, an overseer of forced labor, has been found. On its official side, it reads, belonging to Peleyahu, overseer of the forced labor. There it is, preserved for us. The title was real. The job was real. The Bible presents the truth. It's time to explore the wise guys of the Bible from Habakkuk 1 to 3, and they're all around us. Now, this wise guy, Habakkuk, is a prophet who learns to embrace the reality of God's will over his own. Now, many moderns believe the famous scripture, Romans 8, 28, means this, that all things work together for their own good and their own glory. But actually, Habakkuk helps us realize that all things work together for God's glory, not our personal preferences or our preferred comfort. Now, the first two chapters are a supernatural conversation with God that seems to be a vision conversation with the divine and the mortal. The last chapter is a resolved summary of the first great embracing prophet in this scene. Habakkuk 3, 1 through 13. A prayer of Habakkuk the prophet on Shagayanoth. O Lord, I have heard your speech and was afraid. O Lord, revive your work in the midst of the years. In the midst of the years make it known. In wrath remember mercy. God came from Teman, the Holy One from Mount Paran. His glory covered the heavens, and the earth was full of his praise. His brightness was like the light. He had rays flashing from his hand, and there his power was hidden. Before him went pestilence, and fever followed at his feet. He stood and measured the earth. He looked and startled the nations, and the everlasting mountains were scattered. The perpetual hills bowed. His ways are everlasting. I saw the tents of Cushan in affliction. The curtains of the land of Midian trembled. O Lord, were you displeased with the rivers? Was your anger against the rivers? Was your wrath against the sea that you rode on your horses, your chariots of salvation? Your bow was made quite ready. Oaths were sworn over your arrows. You divided the earth with rivers. The mountains saw you and trembled. The overflowing of the water passed by. The deep uttered its voice and lifted its hands on high. The sun and moon stood still in their habitation. At the light of your arrows they went at the shining of your glittering spear. You marched through the land in indignation. You trampled the nations in anger. You went forth for the salvation of your people, for salvation with your anointed. You struck the head from the house of the wicked by laying bare from foundation to neck. Habakkuk chapter 3, verses 1 through 13. This is Quick Study. One of my favorite prophets in the whole Bible is a man by the name of Habakkuk. Now his name means embracer, and he is the superhero of superheroes, and let me tell you why. Habakkuk is not a prophet to lob distant words against God and then go hide in the rocks somewhere. He does not reflect the typical day we have in which people throw nasty emails at each other, words without accountability. Habakkuk takes the complaint that he has in seeing the evil that surrounds his nation, he takes it directly to God. And he is prepared, and he says things like, How long, O Lord, is this evil going to be here? He is a brave, brave prophet who encounters the presence of God. God's response to courage in prayer and courage in coming to him with, with the troubles, and even if you think God is unjust, God's response is revelation and truth. 
and God answers Habakkuk the embracer. Today, we have 11 verses from chapter 3, which is set in a poetic, absolute, beautifully uh, written poetic piece of art that tells us a lot about God. So let's isolate these 11 verses that Janice has already read and explore possible wisdom we can gain about the judgment of God in our world today. Here, beloved, is Habakkuk chapter 3, verses 1 to 4. A prayer of Habakkuk. The prophet on the Shigayanoth. That's probably an instrument, by the way. Verse 2. O Lord, I have heard your speech, and I was afraid. O Lord, revive your work in the midst of years. In the midst of the years, make it known. In wrath, remember mercy. God came from Teman, the Holy One from Mount Paran, Selah. His glory covered the heavens, and the earth was full of his praise. His brightness was like the light, and he had rays flashing forth from his hands, and there his power was hidden. Now, before we get to the point, this is an interesting reaction to the first answer. In chapter 1 of Habakkuk, God, he asked God the question, how come there's all this evil around me? In chapter 2, God asked him by explaining to him his judgment. Habakkuk then comes back with the beginning of this question in which he restores the image of God in his words, but he's still asking the question. Now, here's what's interesting. The last verse says, and there is, his power was hidden, which means this, God's power is unstoppable even in the presence of strong and tumultuous evil. We must trust in God's power, not in evil's momentum. You see, Habakkuk had seen the momentum of injustice. He had seen the momentum of killing. Habakkuk had seen and witnessed the momentum of, of terror. And he says, how long, O God? And God reminds him of who he is. And Habakkuk realizes that God's power is hidden in the very earth, waiting to be used against the evil coming against his people. A great truth to remember. Habakkuk chapter 3 verse 5 says, Before him went pestilence, and fever followed at his feet. He stood and measured the earth, that is God. He looked and he startled the nations. And the everlasting mountains were scattered. The perpetual hills bowed. His ways, God's ways are everlasting. And I saw the tents of Cushan in affliction. The curtains of the land of Midian trembled. What an amazing verse the seventh verse was. The curtains of the tents of the land trembled. The curtains in their priestly temples worshiping their gods trembled at the power of God which was there the whole time waiting to be unleashed upon evil. That brings me to this point, the second wisdom point that we learn. God's judgment is unstoppable against evil. Now those who love evil and hate God, well, they will be accountable and they will bear the terrible troubles waiting for them. God's judgment is waiting for evil and it will happen. Now then, in Habakkuk chapter 3, verses 8 to 13, the Bible says something even more interesting. It goes on to say, O Lord, were you displeased with the rivers? Was your anger against the rivers? Was your wrath against the sea that you rode on your horses, your chariots of salvation? Your bow was made quite ready. Oaths were sworn over your arrows, Selah. You divided the earth with your rivers. The mountains saw you and trembled. The overflowing waters passed by. The deep uttered its voice and lifted its hands on high. The sun and the moon stood still in their habitation, and the light of your arrows they went, and the shining of your glittering spear. You marched through the land in indignation. You trampled on the nations in anger. You went forth for the salvation of your people, for the salvation of your anointed, and you struck the head from the house of the wicked by laying bare from the foundation to the neck. Beloved, God's purpose is unstoppable to save those who love and who are devoted to Him. He will stir the universe to rescue them. Now, what does that mean? Simply put, where we are with what we have today, listen to me very carefully as we take this last minute and put this in perspective. Habakkuk, like many of us, see a great deal of evil around us, and, and we're frustrated by it, and we might even say, God, where are you? 
What is happening to my life? What is happening to this world? But the answer is God has a plan. And although it may seem for a moment, for a season, that evil has its way, God has already placed his judgment in the foundations of the earth, as he told Habakkuk. And the Bible says that very soon there will come a day when evil, when the potential energy of the universe, when the moon will turn red and the sun will lose its place and the stars will lose their place in heaven and judgment will come upon all evil. Now here's the good and great news. Those of us who love God and have trusted in his shield and his protection, we will avoid such judgment. Revelation 3 says, because you have kept my word and not denied my name, I will keep you from the hour of trial which is coming upon the whole earth to test it. Encouragement from the embracer Habakkuk. The teaching material on today's program is in print form in our Bible guide. Write for yours today. The address is coming up later. Now, as Habakkuk prophesies the destruction of Judah by Babylon, it's important to take a look at the origins of why Judah is about to fall, why God's protection has been removed from this nation. Now, it turns out that when you go back in the Bible and you track its history, it's all because of idolatry, the people turning away from God, breaking the covenant, the promise, the relationship that they had with God that removes his protection. Right now, you and I are going to trace that back to idolatry set into motion by the northern kingdom of Israel that actually seeped down and infiltrated southern Judah. Take a look at this as we study Jeroboam. Newly selected King Jeroboam ruled over his ten tribes from the city of Shechem. He quickly began to fear that he would lose his unsure hold on Israel if he allowed the people to travel back to Jerusalem. It was in Rehoboam's territory that they were to offer their sacrifices and honor the Lord's commands. Jeroboam instituted replacements two golden calves that he set up in so-called high places, one at the city of Bethel and another at Dan. Bethel has not yet been excavated and examined, but extraordinary finds at Dan stand as a stark reminder of Israel's sin against God. A large high place has indeed been found. Stairs lead up to its man-made platform, that stands 10 feet high. Here, somewhere on this platform at Dan, the idol would have stood. Remnants of many sacrificed animals were found, along with the horned altars that they would have been sacrificed on before a golden image of one of their own. Various cultic utensils and smaller incense altars were scattered around in abundance. The discoveries here at Dan clearly illustrate what the Bible portrays. Quick Study TV has over a million viewers a week who watch around the world. Thank you for watching. And we hope this daily telecast is meaningful to you and your spiritual walk with God. Every month, Rod Hembry creates a special personal Bible commentary on the scriptures we study. We call it the Quick Study Wise Guide. This exclusive Bible commentary is not available in any store or online except through our website. It is reserved for those who choose to support this ministry in any amount. If this ministry has encouraged or helped you in any way, then we encourage you to pray about supporting us regularly in any amount. When you do, the monthly subscription of Quick Study Wise Guide will be sent to you automatically. To join us and support the teaching and the preaching of God's Word in the public spaces and places of our current culture today, send to P.O. Box 456, Orangeville, Ontario, L9W5G2. 
In the United States, you can send to P.O. Box 150, Murraysville, Pennsylvania, 15668-0150. In Canada, you can call at 519-940-8338. In the United States, you can call at 724-733-8336. You can also get a hold of the Bible Guide and support us online at BibleDiscoveryTV.com. watching and listening to Quick Study. Thank you for joining us. I want to say hello to everybody listening on CJRI, the Faithway Network in New Brunswick, 104.5 in Fredericton. Hello to all of our friends there. And if you're watching on Vision TV in the morning at 7 uh, a.m., uh, good to have you with us. Mm -hmm. And if you're watching on Cornerstone across the United States of America at our new time slot at 11 p.m., it's great to have you here. That's Eastern Time. Now, Let's get into the question right yes. away because I want to do some things here with Corey in a minute. Go okay. ahead. All right. Well, it's a, it's a rather complicated question. Let's get into it. Habakkuk compares the Chaldeans catching men in their nets like fish. So here's the question. Do you know what Habakkuk says the Chaldeans do with their nets and drag nets after their big catch? All right. So, so the, the image is, the metaphor is mm -hmm. that the Chaldeans or the Babylonians right. uh, yeah. are catching God's people in mm -hmm. their nets. Obviously, this is a judgment, mm -hmm. a reference to judgment. Yes. And so then after their catch, they do something with them. Yes. So the fishing implements, let me just further take you down this path, hook, net, dragnet are used figuratively to represent the weapons of war by means of which the Chaldeans designed to take the Jews. All right, so this really is a really interesting metaphor. Oh, it uh -huh. is. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Corey, give it a shot. Take a shot at it. Yeah, I can't remember exactly what is said here, so I'm going to guess. I'm going to say that they, they uh, pull them in um, and make them stronger. They mend them. They mend the nets. That's going to be my guess. Mending their nets or yep. maybe pruning their nets? Or what do you think? You know what? It's a, it's a, really, it's a really good answer. It's not the right one, however. Um, here's what uh, Habakkuk, or Habakkuk, as I like to say, 1, verses 15 and 16 say. They take up all of them with a hook. They catch them in their net and gather them in their dragnet. Therefore, they rejoice and are glad. Therefore, they sacrifice to their net and burn incense to their dragnet, because by them their share is sumptuous and their uh, food is plentiful. Uh, they, they worship um, their, their weapons. Their objects, their weapons of war, they worship them. And they they think was, that's what gives them strength. Yes, and this was uh, very customary. Uh, in the ancient nations, which, Corey, you would, you would uh, actually know about, the Scythians offered sacrifices to a sword, apparently, mm -hmm. which was set up as a symbol of Mars. Um, and uh, so this is just a comparison of... Well, I mean, we do that today. I mean, in, in uh, the developed countries, mm -hmm. we have models of jets and tanks mm -hmm. and all that sort of thing. And mm -hmm. we think it's the, it is those things which protect us. Uh, it's, a great, it's a great fallacy. It's mm -hmm. a great failure when we think the objects, the works of our hands, right. in military, guns, whatever, are, are those things which that protect save us. us and protect they us. They do yes. not. Mm -hmm. The believer, the wise mm -hmm. believer knows quite differently that it is the sovereignty of God and our obedience to Him that saves us. Anyway, uh, I, I was noticing something, Corey, on your finger, uh, particularly the, uh, the, 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 the hand there that's <laughs> your left hand. What is go as your father, what's going on here? <laughs> Oh, Dad, you know about it. You knew about it before I knew about it, actually. Actually, I did. Are you talking uh, about this? <laughs> a great young man by the name of Matlock uh, contacted me, and, and he's a good friend. And he said to me, uh, well before your birthday, mm -hmm. uh, may I have your daughter's hand in marriage? And I said I would be honored to, and he's a great man. So on your birthday, tell us about that. What happened? Well, Matlock had planned a really um, nice day for the two of us. We had been, we've known each other for a long time. We'd been seeing each other for a little while. And he asked me to marry him. And I said yes. <laughs> so I concurred with your conclusion that this is a good life choice, Dad. <laughs> I agreed with you. <laughs> Matlock is a great man. As he, he's, uh, we're working with him on a film division of Quick Study to create Bible films as well. So it's going to be very interesting, the future. 
And uh, congratulations, Corey. Thank and of you. course, you have your mother and I are, are very blessed mm -hmm. to be have Matlock in our home. So congratulations. Quickly, remember we need your help, and we'd be happy to send you the Quick Study Bible Guide. It's on the screen, has all the material in it that we're teaching, plus the discovery letter. And if you would like to give an offering in any amount to help us, here is the address in the United States: P.O. Box 150. Marysville, Pennsylvania, 15668-0150. In Canada, you can uh, write to us, and for those in Lethbridge on CKVN 98.1 FM, it is P.O. Box 456, Orangeville, Ontario, L9W5G2. Now, the address will be coming up again, so stay there. God is unstoppable. What we see in God is not what we get. We get so much more than what we see. Habakkuk could only see the evil around him, and he was terrorized by it. But God's wisdom is at work in the prophet when he saw the eternal view of God's power and judgment and purpose. Habakkuk discovered that all things work together for God's glory, not for the glory of men or idols. Even evil is modulated to the methods of God's judgment. Evil is used to destroy evil. God's hands are never dirtied by the unjust punishment or judgment. With that we pray, Lord, teach me that all things work together for good, for your glory, not my comfort or preferences. It's time to study Proverbs in our Wise Up segment, and today our proverb is chapter 20, verse 8, where it says, a king who sits on the throne of judgment scatters all evil with his eyes. Now, this is a really interesting passage that speaks of the authority of man, the authority of a manly kingdom. But I want to talk to you for a minute about the authority of God's kingdom. Jesus Christ came, and he died on the cross for this reason. Sin is in the world. It's been here since the fall of man in the Garden of Eden. That's why we have wars. That's why we have disease, sickness, starvation. That's why we have all of this. But God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that's Jesus Messiah, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. So Jesus died on the cross for you and me to take our sin away in that judgment, and he rose again on the third day to give us the gift of eternal life. And he says, if you believe in your heart, that you're the sinner and you need a savior, he's the savior, and you believe and say, Lord, I, I believe you did that and I want to make you Lord of my life. He will come into your life and he will transform you. Come to Jesus today. Thank you for joining us today, radio listeners. Our address is P.O. Box 150, Marysville, Pennsylvania, 15668-0150. In Canada, P.O. Box 456, Orangeville, Ontario, L9W5G2.